The Sika Construction Chemicals Group has won a legal battle in its struggle against Saint-Gobain of France. The Zoo Cantonal Court has decided that Sika's management has right to restrict the founding family's voting rights. Sika's objective in imposing this restriction is to prevent the Sika heirs from being able to sell their controlling majority to the French construction materials giant. Sika's management and important shareholder representatives express their satisfaction with the verdict. Paul Haug, chairman of the board of directors, now hopes that agreement can be reached with the owners. I'm delighted by the verdict for the company first and foremost. After all, Seeker is a paragon of Swiss industry. I'm delighted for management and employees, whose work has been excellent incidentally in these two very difficult years. What went through your mind when you first heard about the verdict, Mr. Burkhard? It surprised us. We hadn't expected a verdict of that nature. We're now analysing it in greater detail. You are going to appeal the verdict? Why? We're appealing the verdict because it fails to address a number of factors. Seeker Head Office in Bar. This is the Construction Chemical Group's central hub from where it manages its 17,000 employees in over 90 countries. Seeker is a showpiece Swiss company, over 100 years old, successful, fast growing. But Seeker is involved in a battle. Its outcome is uncertain. It could change the company forever. The battle for the future of Seeker. A takeover battle that has lasted two years and is unlike anything Switzerland has experienced before. What is at stake is power, pride, greed, hatred, hurt feelings, and primarily a great deal of money. Seeker's closing share price was nearly 3,900 Swiss francs, the highest level in the company's history. Seeker is among the Swiss stock exchange's high flyers. In 2009, the shares cost less than 800 francs. Real estate crisis, financial crisis, economic crisis, Seeker has come through them all. Pension and investment funds have invested billions in Seeker, and so have major foreign investors, among the Microsoft founder and philanthropist Bill Gates. Eighty-four percent of Seeker's share capital belongs to these public shareholders. Only sixteen percent belongs to the Burkhard family, the descendants of Caspar Winkler, the company's founder. But each of the Burkhardt family's shares has six times the voting rights of shares owned by others. The Burkhardt family thus holds 53% of the votes, a controlling majority. For decade after decade, this controlling majority was a guarantee of success and independence. Seeker had the family to thank for its successful development in the long term there was no need to worry about a hostile takeover. On the same day as Sika shares reached their high point, Pierre-André de Chalondar, CEO and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the French Saint-Gobain Group, enters the Park Hyatt Hotel in Zurich. It's strictly confidential. Nobody in the outside world suspects a thing. Not even Seeker's senior managers or the chairman of its board of directors know about it. The Burkhardt siblings have been negotiating the sale of their controlling majority for months. After over 100 years, they want to cash in their family holdings. They have selected saint gobain as the buyer. This evening, the sale contract is being signed in the utmost secrecy. Thank you.
welcome to the Sika Gala around the world here in the prestigious Karkail Event Hall of Lucerne. Feel the Sika spirit. Feel the power. Feel it. A worldwide company, just like a family. That's a Sika mentality. Our Sika spirit, our Sika culture rests on the cornerstone of mutual respect. It's a result of how we cooperate with one another. We all will always do the best for Sika. And thus we want to continue to be Sika's shield. It's my great pleasure and an immense honor to introduce to you Mrs. Franziska Burkhardt-Schenker. It's the granddaughter of Kaspar Winkler, which in the year 1910 laid the foundation in Zurich for the present-day international acting Sika Group. Our thanks are due to everyone who is ready to lead Sika into the new century. As a token of the family's esteem, we are presenting each of the 12,000 or more Sika employees and all our friends and guests here today with an item of rock crystal. And now, please welcome and join me on stage uh, the person who has been chairman of the SICA board for over two years, Paul Helge, and the member of the founder family, Urs Burkhard. Welcome. Buonasera. This is for you. Gentlemen, sir. Welcome on stage. Uh, it's a very pleasure uh, to have you here tonight with you. Sir. Let's <laughs> celebrate the you success. <laughs> you have to tell the CEO. Then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I tell with the CEO after on the dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> this is an international company <laughs> with so much success. In the beginning it was Schweizerdeutsch, now it's English the business language. What, say, what has changed the most about Sika? What do you think has changed? Put the other way around. What has not changed? What has not changed? Then you look down here, the Sika spirit, the dedicated people hasn't changed over, over 100 years. And this will not change else in the next 100 years. The family's commitment to the company remains steadfast. Sika, the construction chemicals and adhesives manufacturer based in Bar, is threatened with the resignation of its entire group management. This is because of the announcement of the takeover of the company by French corporate group Saint-Gobain for 2.75 billion francs. Sika's founding family wants to sell its shares and it sees Saint-Gobain as the best buyer. Chairman of the Board of Directors, Paul Helg, his colleagues on the board and the entire management team were apparently told on Friday that the Sangobar Group is to acquire the shareholding of Sika's founding family.
The Burkhardt family, previously Seeker's protective shield, has turned into Saint-Gobain's way in. The French group is paying the Burkhardt family 2.75 billion Swiss francs, a price that includes an 80% premium. All the other shareholders are left with nothing, for Seeker's articles of association include an opt-out clause that allows Saint-Gobain only to buy the family's shares, without having to make an offer to all the other shareholders, which would otherwise be a legal requirement. Seeker's management is threatening to resign. The world of business is appalled. It's a hot topic throughout the media, and it's really making waves. The sale of this bar-based company, Seeker, to a foreign buyer. In today's focus, we are talking to Tele One economic expert Martin Spieler about the Seeker sensation. Good evening, Mr. Spieler. Yes, it's an unbelievable story. This is a well-managed family company, and suddenly the family goes behind everybody's back and sells its shares to a foreign buyer, pocketing 2.75 billion francs. What makes it most unbelievable is that all the other shareholders, public shareholders, pension funds, small shareholders, insured persons, are to be left with nothing. To put it another way, the family is cashing in, but the public shareholder are not being made an offer at all. Small shareholders, pension funds, who all put their trust in Seeker and in the family, they're now losers. They're being left with nothing. This is a fundamental error, and it's also unbelievable that group management and a lot of board members were kept in the dark. This sale was decided in total secrecy. The family is cashing in big time. On Monday, December the 8th, 2014, investors panic. The shares close 22% down. Market value worth a billion francs has gone up in smoke. In the following days, the shares fall even further. The worlds of business and politics are uneasy. Many traditional listed Swiss companies have ownership structures similar to Seekers. What we have here is a negative example. Only today an owner of a large family company here in Switzerland told me that what the Seeker family shareholders have done weakens a large number of listed family companies in Switzerland. A great deal of trust has been lost, not just by investors, by employees too. It's no longer quite as clear what family shareholders will end up doing. Is their only concern ultimately going to be cashing in as fast as possible, without a care as to what happens to the rest? What we are looking at here at Seeker is an unarguable loss of trust. Swiss family companies are being tarred with the same brush. Elevator manufacturer Schindler is ruled by the Schindler and Bonnar families, while the Buhofer family is the anchor shareholder at domestic appliance producer Fau Zug. Will the same thing happen to them one day? Are companies like these still good investments? The bosses state their position. There will be no seeker Mark II here. Independence and local roots are worthy of respect in their own right. Any representatives of major shareholders on the board of directors owe allegiance to all shareholders. The Burkhardts, from acclaimed Seeker family to a huge disappointment for all employees and shareholders in just four years. How on earth did that happen? So you see, solid Swiss firm and uh, solid as a rock. Francisco Burkhardt died at the age of 84 on December the 12th, 2013, three years after the centenary celebrations. Since then, the five Burkhardt brothers and sisters have been the sole heirs. They each hold 20% of the Schenker Winkler Holding Company, the legal construct in which the family's registered seeker shares are held and by which they are administered. 
Within just one year, the siblings organized the sale of their controlling majority in Sika to Saint-Gobain. Why do the Burkhards want to give up their inheritance and the dividends of nearly 30 million francs a year that it brings them? And why did they plan the sale behind the backs of Sika's managers? Urs Burkhardt, part of familias of the Sika heirs, has talked about this in interviews. There was nothing unusual, he explains, in second-generation heirs disposing of their inheritance. Their connection with the company was far more tenuous. But he also made it clear that the family and Sika's managers had not seen eye to eye. And that, said Urs Burkhardt, was why they had negotiated with Saint-Gobain in secret. There is much more behind this quick sale than the public suspects. It's the story of five siblings who do not always act in concert, and the story of the huge legacy of a father figure to whom none of his children has lived up to. Sika was founded by Kaspar Winkler in 1910. Winkler had come to Zurich from Vorarlberg in Austria 20 years before as a hard-working young plasterer. He worked his way up to foreman, then went out on his own. Kaspar Winkler experimented with building materials. He invented a mixture that made mortar waterproof and called it Sika. Breakthrough. His first major customer is SBB, which uses Sika mortar to keep the ceilings and walls of its tunnels dry. 67 tunnels on the Gotthard route between Lucerne and Chiasso are sealed with Sika mortar. In a few years, Winkler expands the company. His only daughter, Clara, marries graduate chemical engineer Fritz Schenker, who joins the company and strengthens its international expansion. Sika soon has a presence in England, Italy and Germany. Fritz and Clara Schenker also have only one child, their daughter Franziska. She marries socio-economist Romuald Burkhardt, who also joins the company as the Schenker's son-in-law. Under Romuald Burkhardt, Sika grows from an SME to a global group. Burkhardt moves group headquarters to Bar, and in 1973 he brings the company to the stock market. Romuald Burkhardt sets new standards in the management of the company, making employees central to its activity. For him, Sika isn't just a company, it's a community of people who want to achieve something together. He calls this philosophy the Sika spirit. This is what drives Sika employees all over the world to aspire to their highest potential. The 1973 flotation is a crucial point in Sika's history. This private company opens its doors to external capital providers. New shareholders appear. The family sells part of the company, and the money raised enables it to expand. The voting shares enable the family to keep the company under its control. Romuald Burkhardt dies in 2004 at the age of 79. His loss leaves a huge gap. The siblings are constantly riven by petty jealousies and disputes, says a confidant of the family, mostly over trivial matters. The three sisters and the elder brother pursue careers outside Sika. 
but Urs Burkhardt has represented the family on Seeker's board of directors since 1992. Before the scandal broke, according to the company, he represented the interests of the community of Urs skillfully and credibly. Fritz Burkhardt, the youngest sibling, an economist, he joined Seeker as a manager in 2001. He works his way up through various levels, heading the company's operations in the Netherlands and later in Italy. In 2012, Fritz Burkhardt, who once hoped to follow his father's footsteps and become Seeker's CEO, leaves the company a disappointed man. According to people whom he worked for and who worked for him, Fritz Burkhardt failed to achieve targets, was a poor manager and a difficult character. Others say he was talented, he was charming, good at making contacts, and it was only Italy's poor economic situation that robbed him of success. In 2012, Fritz Burkhardt hopes to join the board of directors, but the Seeker senior management won't have it. Some members of the board even threaten resignation. His mother Francisca, now 83, must decide. She sides with the company against her son. As far as Fritz Burkhardt is concerned, the break with his parents' company is now final. Neither Fritz Burkhardt nor his three sisters have commented publicly on the Seeker dispute. Urs Burkhardt remains the family's sole spokesman. After Francisca Burkhardt's death, the family finally falls apart. Fritz Burkhardt no longer attends meetings of the family holding company. What exactly happened after that remains unclear. One thing is clear, the five siblings reach agreement on the sale of their Seeker shares. Commercial lawyer Urs Schenker sets out to look for a buyer and after a few months, he introduces Saint-Gobain. On December 5, 2014, the contract is signed by Urs Kamita and Fritz Burkhardt in the Hotel Park Hyatt in Zurich. Monica and Gabriella Burkhardt do not personally sign off the sale of their inheritance. They are represented by their brothers, Urs and Fritz. The other members of the board of the Schenker Winkler Holding Family Company, Max Rosler, Willy Leimer, Jürgen Tingren and Jacques Bischoff, claim to have known nothing about the sale. All four of them say they were unaware of the negotiations. Yet to this day, they defend the Burkhardt family's decision to sell with all their might. Seeger Sieger has expanded at breakneck speed in the last two decades. Chemical additives for sealing, insulation, adhesion and reinforcement purposes are much in demand. In 1990, sales were just above 1 billion francs. Today, they exceed 5 billion. Earnings grew from barely 50 million francs to almost 500 million, and expansion continues at a rapid pace. There is hardly a new building anywhere in the world today that does not contain Seeker construction materials. And now Seeker is to be taken over by saint gobain at 350, one of France's oldest companies and 10 times as big as Seeker. saint gobain is a global industrial conglomerate distribution of specialist construction materials, glass production, mortar, sanitary products. Saint-Gobain also has a presence in Switzerland, where it has over 2,000 employees. Companies such as Isover, Sanitas Trosch and Weber belong to the group. 
Seeker looks like a good fit with Saint-Gobain, at first sight. And company takeovers are an everyday occurrence in a free economy. Swiss companies too buy other companies in Switzerland and abroad every year. Seeker itself has bought up more than 50 companies in the last 12 years. So why is Seeker rejecting Saint-Gobain so vehemently? The proposed change of control creates an entirely new situation. We would have a controlling shareholder active in the same market as us, with a strategy of its own. At Seeker we also have a strategy for growth, and the two strategies are not always compatible in every respect. That would inevitably lead to conflicts of interest. Saint-Gobain CEO Pierre-André de Chalandard sets out to allay fears. He appeals to the Seeker workforce and the public, placing newspaper ads and giving interviews. He promises that Seeker will remain Seeker, no facilities in Switzerland will be closed, and he gives all employees a two-year job guarantee. Yet experts remain skeptical. Should we be worried about Seeker jobs in our region too? You have to be realistic. Initially, of course, people will say, no, there's absolutely no problem. Everything is safeguarded. Nothing will change. The fact is that Saint-Gobain has only acquired a voting majority. At first, people always try to be a little placatory. But Saint-Gobain is a much bigger group and is also listed on the stock exchange in France. Of course, Saint-Gobain wants to get its 2.75 billion francs back, and that means realizing what are called synergy effects. You have to get your costs back, and whatever happens, that's going to mean brutal job cuts. And then let nobody tell me that the company's management will stay here in Zug or Obwalden. What will happen is that after a certain delay, everything will be centralized. And that, I'm sure, is when jobs will disappear. The SICA Board of Directors. Nine people sit on this body. Three of them, Urs Burkhardt, Jürgen Tingren and Willi Leimer, represent the family. Six members represent other shareholders. Six to three. With this ratio, the family used to permit a balance of power. With the heirs' voting majority set against the majority of independent board members. But now the family is not bringing Seeker's management under its control. Led by Chairman Paul Helg, the six rebellious board members are blocking the sale. Pierre-André de Chalandar has made it clear to the family that they must regain control, because only then will the takeover be completed, and only then will Saint-Gobain pay the heirs their 2.75 billion francs. Three significant general meetings ensue. The family wants to deselect the rebellious board members at the general meeting and replace them with its own candidates, thus regaining control of Seeker. Romuald Burkhardt and his Seeker in 1993. With just such an emergency in mind as the one that has now arisen, they put a weapon in the hands of the board of directors to enable them to fend off the impending hostile takeover. The weapon is called Restricted Transferability. It was written into Seeker's Articles of Association in 1993. The board of directors can restrict the voting rights of a buyer of registered shares to a maximum of 5%. Furthermore, the Board of Directors can apply the restricted transferability provision of Article 4 of Seeker's Articles of Association to limit votes of the registered shares held by Schenker Winkler Holding to 5% of the registered shares. The family is convinced that restricted transferability does not apply to them, because they are not selling the registered shares themselves. They are selling the Schenker Winkler holding company, in which the registered shares are pulled. We have a further contribution for Mr. Urs Schenker representing Schenker Winkler holding. My dear Paul, 
You have done the company great service, but now you enforce restricted transferability three times, and you cite the seeker articles of association, but no seeker shares have been sold, it's Schenker Winkler Holding that was sold. Georg Stücki became a member of the company's board of directors in 1993 when restricted transferability was written into Seeker's Articles of Association. Formerly a member of both the two cantonal council and the national council, he was once also involved in formulating Swiss company law. He explains the decision made by the board in 1993. On the one hand, Romuald Burkhard wanted the family to be able to sell its voting majority in the company at some stage. On the other, we wanted to make sure we could have our say about the buyer. So this restricted transferability is a right of veto on the part of the board. In a certain sense it is. But it also serves the interests of the public shareholders, who after all hold most of the capital. But it's now being said that the family isn't selling its Seeker shares, it's selling the Schenker Winkler holding company in which the shares are pooled. That's just a ploy, a circumvention. You can't circumvent restricted transferability simply by interposing a holding company between the parties. Romuald Burkhard protected his Seeker from hostile takeovers like an impregnable fortress. The voting shares secure the family's majority, and if that majority is under threat, the board of directors can apply restricted transferability. Romuald Burkhard believed he had also taken the necessary precautions within the family. He entered into a contract with his children in which the Burkhard family stated that Seeker must remain independent and that family members intended to be guided by the same high ethical principles as their forefathers. Despite this promise to their parents, the heirs now want to sell their family shares to Saint-Gobain. The break with Seeker is thus a fait accompli. <laughs> Seeker, which Urs Burkhard once described as one big family, is hopelessly divided. Seeker versus Seeker. Seeker, the perpetrators of the coup and their henchmen are the gravediggers of the rule of law. Hatred, Switzerland's dirtiest takeover battle. The board of directors is taking too much upon itself. The board of directors is planning a coup. The founding family of the Seeker Construction Materials Group is to be sidelined. The owners are to be dispossessed. Now Federal Councillor Schneider Amman is getting involved. The board of directors is fermenting rebellion. The self-declared Robin Hoods are behaving more like wannabe owners. This outrageous development is being driven by arrogance, social envy and the crazy urge to protect their patch. After over a hundred years, the family, the major shareholder, is sidelined. At three turbulent general meetings, their voting rights are curtailed. The board of directors keep control. Saint-Gobain is proposing to integrate Seeker fully into its accounts despite holding only 16% of the company's capital, justifying the exorbitant purchase price of the holding by citing extensive synergies. But since there are still public shareholders, full legal integration is not possible, and that makes the proclaimed synergies totally unrealistic. I am pleased to have the opportunity to explain our view on how the current situation came about. 
First and foremost, I have an important message. Your jobs are safe. Saint-Gombert has said so on numerous occasions. It gave us that promise in the sales negotiations, and Saint-Gobert has confirmed it over and over again. No member of the founding family is now operationally active at Seeker. The interests of individual members of the family have not always been entirely identical. We try to involve the family more closely in the company, but in vain. The board of directors rebuffed us. That impaired the relationship based on trust that had existed for several decades. We accordingly decided jointly that the time had come for us to look for a new partner and principal shareholder for Sika. Commercial lawyer Urs Schenker made his first public appearance at the general meeting in April 2016. It was he who put together the most contentious deal in the history of Swiss business. Today we witness a historic event. Six members of the board of directors have re-elected themselves by the simple device of excluding the principal shareholder. That is not Swiss law and Swiss law shall prevail. The same six people also tell us, you have no freedom to elect us individually. We can only be elected as a group, all of us, or none of us. That may have been all right for D'Artagnan and the Musketeers, one for all and all for one, but it won't do here. Many thanks for your contribution. If it were that simple and clear, I wonder why the High Court is recommending that restricted transferability and its applicability should be tested in the courts. Each of the three general meetings lasted over six hours. Small shareholders and investors fight deals at the speaker's desk. 500 shareholders listen. You are trying effectively to dispossess the family with a judicial ploy. Negotiating behind the backs of partners of many years standing is an offence against honour and decency. The only problem is that Sika would in future be dominated by its largest competitor, which from a commercial viewpoint would have to make every effort, even vis-à-vis -vis its shareholders, to ensure that the bulk of future added value came its way. Mr. Helg is an employee. He does not own this company, though he acts as if he did. The way you're behaving here is like a banana republic. We must maintain the rule of law. Why have you always been so supercilious? Why did you not give the family more responsibility? No family members now have operationally active roles. Fritz Burkhard would certainly have had the potential to do so. I'd prefer to have Saint-Gobain as the company's majority shareholder rather than some aggressive private equity firm or even the Chinese. Saint-Gobain will need to find value elsewhere to justify the massive premium. By systematically shifting value away from Sika to Saint-Gobain at the expense of employees, shareholders and the economies of Zug and Switzerland. Mr. de Chalandar, non merci. Politicians in Switzerland do not normally interfere in our free market economy, but they are queuing up to say clearly what they think about the Sika dispute. Some even attended the Sika general meeting as shareholders. As I've said, I understand the family's wish to sell their majority shareholding. Go ahead and do so, my dear Mr. Burkhardt, but please break the habit of a lifetime and find a solution with more commercial credibility. Take up the dialogue that your father maintained with such care and safeguard the independence and the spirit that have brought Sika success. What this is about is whether we still take ownership rights seriously in Switzerland. 
or whether we shrug our shoulders and look the other way when members of the board of directors and employees, in an act of willful self-deception, suddenly conduct themselves as if they were the company's principal owners. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. You have to hear what all sides are saying. This is not North Korea. If Sangoban were in control, Sika's sites in Switzerland could be under threat. To me, this is still about honor and decency. Entrepreneurial freedom must always go hand in hand with responsibility. You must finally come to your senses and respect the legitimate rights of the majority owners, the Burkhardt founding family. Thank you for your contribution, Mr. Köppel. I have to point out, however, that eloquent as your remarks were, they failed to address the subject, because what we are talking about here is not ownership, it's restricted transferability. The SICA Board of Directors is skating on thin legal ice, more of which is set to melt in the spring sun that we are currently enjoying. I wonder how you can sleep if you adopt resolutions that you cannot be sure are legally effective. Many thanks for that legal lecture, Mr. Vogt. I can confirm that I sleep well as I have always done. We have eminent legal experts who take a view different from yours. Sika has 17,000 employees worldwide. Numerous executives from several continents attend the general meeting to put their concerns directly to the Burkhardt family and Saint-Gobain. I'm the general manager of Sika Netherlands and I'm the successor of Fritz Burkhardt. I had a very close and intense working relationship with Fritz. Uh, I, it's, it's not often that you meet someone um, with so much ambition and so heartfelt involved for a company like Fritz. How proud we were on the Seeker Spirit, how proud Fritz was on the Seeker Spirit. Uh, every meeting he told us, no compromise on the Seeker Spirit. We are a family. Please reconsider uh, the sale of your, sharehold, of your shares to Saint-Gobain and come back to the Seeker family if that's still possible. I am working with uh, the company for 24 years, more than half of my life. I am now the area manager for Southeast Asia One. Um, let's go back on the, the famous 8th of December. We actually uh, were in a meeting, discuss our very exciting motor strategy. And then the news broke out. We were all in shock. We didn't see it coming. We didn't understand. In 2010, we all received gifts of rock crystal from you. It symbolizes constancy, loyalty, reliability. And that is why, Mr. Burkhard, I'm handing my rock crystal back to you.
I cannot stand up here on my own and speak to you with the voice of only one. I feel compelled to invite my fellow friends and compatriots from the management team to join me up here in a show of solidarity for the message I have to make. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please, of the senior managers. But as you can see, we are a team that stands for SICA. We won't sit idly by and watch this proceeding go forward. And if you can't deal with the heart of a company, who are you dealing with? To Sango Ban, to the family Burkhart, I am not for sale. I am not for sale. Are we for sale? No. no. We are not for sale. The family contests all the general meeting decisions in which its voting majority was restricted. It files an action in the Tsu Cantonal Court. After a takeover battle lasting 23 months, the Tsu Cantonal Court delivers its verdict. It is a clear victory for the SICA Board of Directors. The Cantonal Court dismisses all the Burkhardt family's actions. The Board of Directors was right to restrict the family's voting rights at the general meetings. The court ratifies the actions of the members of the Board of Directors in full. The conclusion of the court, the Burkhardt family is also required to abide by Seeker's Articles of Association. It must accept restricted transferability where the sale of its shares is concerned. The verdict of the court also brings new explosive facts to light. It gives an insight into the sales contract between the Burkhardt family and Saint-Gobain. The documents contain no trace of the promises of the two contracting parties, namely that Seeker would remain Seeker and the company would retain its independence. There are no legal obligations. The contract gives Pierre-André de Chalandar full access. Seeker's CEO and its board of directors can stay on only if they cooperate. In fall, Seeker. The battle for Seeker has been raging for two years. Despite the takeover battle, the company is flourishing. Even after the verdict of the Cantonal Court, the dispute goes on. Someday a court will find in our favor and dispense justice. The Seeker dispute is a goldmine for the lawyers and advisors. Total spending to date by the parties involved is estimated to exceed 30 million francs. Zurich's big commercial law firms and Switzerland's most renowned lawyers are involved in the Seeker dispute. Urs Schenker and Rolf Vater are among the brightest stars in the Swiss legal firmament. Schenker is responsible for the fateful Seeker deal, while Vater is advising Saint-Gobain. The result of their work? Such a debacle as Swiss business and justice have probably never experienced.
the legacy of seeker pioneers Kasper Winkler, Fritz Schenker and Romwald Burkhardt has become a major money spinner for lawyers and advisors. And the French Saint-Gobain company, which wants to take Seeker over, says it has faith in Swiss justice. It hopes the founding family's ownership rights will be restored at the appeal hearing. 